what we've been doing the last three years and what exactly what the um, what the hint is. So we've got a network of some 21 different horticultural organisations. You can see all the marvellous logos up there. So, so it spreads across just about pretty well all the temperate horticulture, especially in Victoria. So we've got all the industries uh, involved um, with the hint. And the network is mostly a network of the industry development officers from those industries and some of the um, executive officers as well. So we meet approximately six times a year and run for various different types of reasons. So some of it might be training events, like the um, biosecurity ILO training, Excel training, um, depending on where there's a skill gap that's been identified. Um, we have sessions with researchers where the researchers can explain what some of the latest information is to the industries. Um, we see some innovative farms on our tours. Um, um, we do some regional tours, like we went to um, New South Wales DPR just quite recently and got introduced to some of the latest research that New South Wales DPR guys are doing. Um, we've had some facility tours, for example, to um, the Melbourne markets, the New Melbourne markets, and the Port of Melbourne. Um, and we've also had sessions with some of the government um, people, like some policy people. And well, this afternoon you'll meet some of the trade investment guys, um, and they'll talk about some of their roles. Um, and we've done some information around things like social media and so on. There's a web platform associated with it here which has things like a blogging capacity, there's a newsletter that comes out monthly which gives the latest information that goes up there. Um, there's research information <coughs> on the website and um, also events. And the third component of the current here is related to, we have some um, four major grants for four of the industries. And that, that was related to a specific project in industry development or market sort of access type issues with those four industries. So some of the outcomes and benefits that the HIN um, members have identified as being part of the network has in, well, one of the major ones has been the networking of cross industry, sharing of ideas, and sharing of issues. So, you know, one industry might have a particular issue, um, and by being able to meet and network with the other um, industries, they've been able to, you know, get some hints on how to solve those, look at, you know, some common issues. Another one is overcoming isolation. So by pulling together the network, um, we've been able to get a lot more of a critical mass where we can go across the industry. Because a lot of the industry organisations are you know, one man band or one or two. Um, we have uh, much better industry government interactions. So this is where we've connected with the industries with researchers, policy, trade and investment. Um, as I mentioned before, we have capability building training. So a classic example of that one was the biosecurity industry liaison officer training that we held in July, which was upskilling all the industries in their roles and responsibilities in terms of biosecurity emergencies. Um, across the network, there's quite a bit of coaching and mentoring between the industry groups um, and what we found is that you know a lot of the people who were in the network initially there's quite a few with turnover of staff some of those have left and we've got new people in and what they find is that 
they are automatically got a network that they're connected to. And so they, so, you know, they're not on their own anymore and they get to uh, mentor with some of the other members. Industry intelligence. So quarterly we have an industry update where we get the information from all the different horticulture industries and that is distributed both within the department as well as um, within the different industry groups. And then um, we've also had, um, with the HIM grants, we've been able to build on some of those grants and Rowena will tell, give us the example with the tableware industry with respect to their export registration process. So she'll explain that to us as well. So they're just some of the major areas that we've covered over the last three years. So looking towards the future. So we're looking at temperate horticultural industries and we're looking at the possibility of spreading across states. We also already have industry development officers who are based in South Australia and in New South Wales. And we're just looking at um, <coughs> the possibilities of also getting interdepartmental um, collaboration as well.